time is 6.15. Here is the news edited by Dili Ningunavardana, read by Victor Raj. Here are the headlines of the local news. The President embarks on an observatory tour to revitalize tourism industry in New Aradia. Inaugural Foreign Office consultations between Sri Lanka and Kyrgyz Republic are held. The IMF World Bank Group's spring meeting is commenced with productive bilateral discussion. 25 billion rupees is allocated to continue the modernization program in the agricultural sector. Dengue cases in the island for 2024 top 21,000. Foreign news, Copenhagen's historic stock exchange is in flames. Sports news, tennis. Alcaraz withdraws from the Barcelona Open with injury. Local news in detail. President Ranil Vikramasinghe visited the Court Lodge Estate, owned by the Udupusa Lava Plantation Company in Novaralia, this morning to explore opportunities for the revival of the tourism industry around the picturesque hills of Novaralia. Notably, the President embarked on this journey by travelling the Peko Trail. The Peko Trail spans over 300 km through the central highlands of Sri Lanka, regarded as one of Asia's best-kept secret routes. Originally constructed during the British colonial period to transport tea from vast plantations to factories, the trail holds historic significance. During his walk along the Peku Trail, covering a distance of 3.2 km, the President engaged in friendly conversation with the workers employed at the Court Lodge Estate. President Vikram Singh also emphasized the importance of providing Peku Trail tourists with the opportunity to savor a freshly brewed cup of tea. Furthermore, he explored avenues to bolster the tourism industry associated with Sri Lanka's central highlands by leveraging the Peko Trail. Sri Lanka and the Kyrgyz Republic signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Bilateral Cooperation at the Foreign Office Consultations that took place in Bishkek yesterday. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that the two sides prioritized expanding economic cooperation focusing on apparel, gems and jewellery, tea, food and beverages, wellness and Ayurvedic products, education services and ICT sectors during the discussion. The potential for the promotion of tourism to facilitate connectivity and to strengthen people-to-people -people linkages was also considered. Cooperation at a multilateral and regional fora and developments in the respective regions and current global issues were among the other areas taken up for discussion. This is the first high-level visit to take place between the two countries since Sri Lanka established diplomatic relations with the Kyrgyz Republic in 1996. State Minister of Finance Ehan Sema Singh said Sri Lanka commenced the IMF and the World Bank Group Spring Meeting with a very productive bilateral discussion with the Beauty Managing Director of the IMF, Mr. Kenji Okamura. He said in a post on X that Mr. Okamura commended the Sri Lankan authorities on the strong program implementation and excellent reform progress. The Minister said Mr. Okamura emphasized the need to preserve the hard-earned gains Sri Lanka has experienced since the beginning of the IMF program and continue strong ownership. He further added that Mr. Okamura was made aware of the recent socio-economic developments and the authorities' commitment to ensure, ensuring continuity and consistency of the microeconomic policies and reforms undertaken. This news comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. Continuing with more local news, Minister Mahind Amaravira said that the President has allocated 25 billion rupees to continue the modernization program in the agricultural sector this year. 
The minister expressed these views while participating in the occasion of distributing the fruit plants required for the national tree planting auspicious time in the 18th of on the 18th of this month to the staff of the Ministry of Agriculture and Plantation Industries. Minister Marvira highlighted the need to attract the youth community to agriculture in this country. In order to achieve this goal, the Youth Agri Entrepreneurship Village System was started in Hambantota, Monragala, Gol, Wavunia and Kurunagara districts in last year. The aim of this program is to select at least 200 villages in 200 division or secretariat divisions of the island and develop them as youth agro entrepreneurship villages. In particular, providing drone technology using parachute discs for paddy cultivation, using sprinkler water technology for irrigation as well as drip irrigation method, cultivating seeds that can get more yield as well as cultivating high quality crops will be carried out under this program. According to the epidemiology unit of the tally of dengue cases recorded for 2024 has topped 21,000 mark. The highest number of recent dengue cases, which is 7,547, was reported from the Western Province. Out of that, over 4,000 cases were from the Colombo District. As several parts in Sri Lanka have experienced significant rainfall for the past few days, health officials urge people to keep their surroundings clean and destroy mosquito breeding places in order to keep dengue at bay. That ends local news. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhale Pavedamahatma. Minister of Education Susil Prem Jayanta has undertaken an observation tour of the University of Illinois in Chicago, USA. During his visit, the minister visited the medical and robotic surgery laboratories of the world's second largest medical school owned by the university. During the visit, the minister announced that a memorandum of understanding was signed between the University of Piradhania and the University of Illinois to establish a collaborative exchange program in the fields of education and research. That came to you on Main News Story. The Main News Story was brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamatna. Moving on to Watchlight, the Med Department bonds that thundershots accompanied by severe lightning are likely to occur at several places in the Western Sabragamu and Northwestern Provinces and in the Gol, Mathura, Kandy and Noreli districts. It further predicts of possible temporary localized strong winds during thunder showers. The general public is kindly requested to avoid using wild telephones and connected electric appliances during the thunderstorms and to also avoid using open vehicles such as bicycles, tractors, boats, etc. They are further asked to be aware of fallen trees and power lines. That ends watch light. Coming up, world news. Headlines first. Copenhagen's historic stock exchange is in flames. Triumph trial. Dozens of jurors rejected as they say they cannot be impartial. The general election of India will begin on Friday. World news in detail. Denmark's historic old stock exchange building in the center of the Copenhagen has been engulfed by fire. The 17th century Berzen is one of the city's oldest buildings. The building is nearby the Denmark's parliament and the royal palace Christiansborg. Danish media said the nearby square was being evacuated. The cause of the fire is unknown for the moment. Dozens of potential jurors have been ruled out of Donald Trump's unprecedented criminal trial in New York on impartiality grounds. Mr. Trump denies falsifying business records to cancel a hush money payment to 
porn star Stormy Daniels just ahead of the 2016 election, which he won. 60 of 96 potential jurors were quick to say they could not be impartial after proceedings began on Monday. Jury selection will continue tomorrow and could take up to two weeks. Indians will begin choosing a new parliament for the next five years on the 19th of April, as Prime Minister Narendra Modi seeks a third consecutive term. With 969 million eligible voters polling to select, 543 MPs will run over six weeks, ending on the 1st of June. Opinion polls put Mr. Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party and its allies ahead. They are up against the Indian National Development Inclusive Alliance of India, which groups more than two dozen opposition parties, including the Congress. To wrap up the world news, let's take a look at the headlines once again. Copenhagen's historic stock exchange is in flames. Triumph trial, dozens of jurors rejected as they say they cannot be impartial. The general election of India will begin on Friday. That ends world news. Moving on to development news, the Sri Lanka-Pakistan Business Council of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce recently paid a courtesy call on the newly appointed High Commissioner of Pakistan in Sri Lanka, Major General Retired Fahim Olaziz. During the visit, both parties expressed their intention to collaborate closely for the future development of economic, tourism and investment opportunities between the two countries. Additionally, they discussed the potential for developing Buddhist pilgrimages to Pakistan. The visit concluded positively, with both parties expressing optimism for future collaborations and mutual benefit. That came to you on Development News. Moving on with sports news. Tennis news. Carlos Alcaraz was withdrawn from the Barcelona Open with an injury. The Wimbledon champion and world number three has won the title in the past two years, but has been suffering from a right forearm problem. Alcaraz had also withdrawn from the week's Monte Carlo Masters, where he was drawn to play Canada's Felix Auger Eliasim. The Barcelona Open started with the qualifying rounds on Saturday and is set to Rafael Nadal's comeback. Alcaraz was the two-time defending champion at the Barcelona Open, having lifted the trophy in 2022 and 2023. That ends the sports news. Go ekatiana youth ticket, life ticket, change ticket, near meta set trainer. As for Hagena, the Kapuida, Habakana, youth ticket, near meta set trainer, friendship better men. The all new NSB Ithromitru account, NSB I am, a plan for your dream. Business news, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Malika Himachandra Jewelers offers some astonishing launches to brighten up this hour of the season, including a stunning 22 carat pearl jewelry collection, a vibrant colored stone jewelry collection, exquisite 22 carat gold bracelets and designed chains, and a daz- dazzling diamond jewelry collection. Malika Himachandra Jewelers, partnered with leading banks and financial institutions, offer up to 40% discounts and easy payment plans of up to 24 months until the 20th of April. That ends business news. Business news, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekatiana youth ticket, life ticket, change ticket, near meta set trainer. As for Hagena, the Kapuida, Habakana, youth ticket, near meta set trainer, friendship better men. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am, a plan for your dream. Moving on to economic news, market analysts said that the old share price index on the Columbus Stock Exchange crossed the 12,000 points mark last week for the first time since the 21st of February 2022. The bullish trend extended due to the prevailing favorable outlook on Sri Lanka's external debt restructuring exercise. 
They further added that the banking sector counters contributed more than 50% to the turnover. That ends economic news. Weather report. Shah Shah Thunder Shahs will occur at several places in the western Sambragamma central and northwestern provinces and in the Gol and Mathura districts. Shah Shah Thunder Shahs will occur at times in the eastern and Uber provinces and in Hambantara district. Several spells of Shahs may occur in the north central province. Fairly heavy Shahs about 75 mm are likely at some places in the western Sambragamma and northwestern provinces. Misty conditions can be expected at some places in the western Sabragam and central provinces and in the Golan Mathra districts during the morning. That ends with the report. To wrap up the evening news on Radio Sri Lanka, let's take a look at the headlines once again. The President embarks on an observation tour to revitalize tourism industry in Nuer area. Inaugural Foreign Office consultations between Sri Lanka and Kyrgyz Republic are held. The IMF World Bank Group Spring Meeting is commenced with productive bilateral discussion. 25 billion rupees is allocated to continue the modernization program in the agricultural sector. Dengue cases in the island for 2024 top 21,000. Foreign News Copenhagen Historic Stock Exchange is in flames. Sports News Tennis Alcaraz withdraws from the Barcelona Open with injury. With that, we wrap up the evening news on Radio Sri Lanka. Back to my good friend and U.S. Ramesh Pierce.